what an amazing experience to celebrate the second birthday of the Galileo project two years after it was inaugurated in July 2021 uh, meeting the members of the team and celebrating the accomplishments Developments uh, both within the Galileo project and uh, in Washington DC as many of you know uh, Things that we've never thought may happen do happen Right, I mean the, there's so much has been said and uh, maybe some additional perspectives um, I'm always the resident skeptic uh, we're, we're so, It's good to have that spectrum. We all agree to apply the scientific method rigorously that only scientific evidence will do so glad we're here Glad we're doing the, ex, the observatories and the more mobile, smaller observatories that maybe at some point could help us find and localize and prioritize sites. Uh, most recently, we went on an expedition to the Pacific Ocean to look for tiny metallic marbles molten off the surface of the first recognized interstellar meteor when it exploded 20 kilometers above the Pacific Ocean and the amazing thing is we found them we brought them back we now have more than 720 of them and we are studying them with the best instruments in the world everything was initiated by this letter confirming at the 99.999 percent the interstellar origin of a meteor discovered on the 8th of January 2014 uh, what came together with uh, this um, uh, letter was the uh, light curve that showed three flares separated roughly by a tenth of a second from each other. And the last flare was at 200 megapascals. Uh, the first flare was above 100. And iron meteorites withstand about 50. But irrespective, it's an outlier simply because Given the data, it maintained its integrity to very high run pressure above everything that you see in the catalog. This object was moving at 60 kilometers per second, which is uh, twice the characteristic speed of stars. And that is rare. Uh, this is the sled and it looks really... <laughs> it's a very primitive device if you think about it. It's just like... 200 kilograms, a relatively dumb instrument like magnets, new new magnets on both sides. You see them, you will see it closer, but they are screwed uh, into the rubber. And just think about it, such a primitive thing, putting it on the floor of the ocean and just dragging it, like mowing the lawn back and forth, 10 kilometers on it at a time, one meter in width. And, this, and it went all the way to five kilometers in length. The depth of the ocean is two kilometers, somewhere between 1.6 to 2.2 in the region that we were exploring. Altogether, it was a very challenging task to look for fragments that are less than a millimeter in size across a region of 10 kilometers length um, and find them. And these are the tracks that we took. It was very challenging, but we found what we were looking for. That's the amazing thing you, that you know, Laura produced based on the yield per unit mass. Okay, so that's the rate of collecting spherules per unit mass. Beautiful uh, spherules inside spherules. Now, there are many more small ones inside and you can see that it was made of mergers of tiny spheres. I've never seen an image like that. Okay, let's put it this way. It's quite amazing and uh, so it's, you, you find spheres that were glued together by a droplet that engulfed them and then a bigger droplet engulf those. So you end up with spheres inside spheres. Uh, here is an example of an unusual one that uh, Sophie found a few days ago. We have two rack systems that are <coughs> almost identical and then we have something called a mesh node or a node here in the, in the center it's with like half second exposures. You can learn a lot from them actually. You can build up a lot of interesting statistics on their color for example. And this is with an uncolored is that it should be self-guided so that after it does reach a point of interest in the sky or a pointing vector, it can stay locked onto something. Um, 
solely, it's a webcam, and its sole purpose was to just figure out if it's working, like if the algorithms and the math is working too. This thing. Um, we went to go and try and generate synthetic data, and we thought, well, this is fantastic because with this approach, we can have um, really fine-grained control over all the, um, the positions, the orientations. Um, so you can notice um, that for the synthetic data, there's a lot more false positives. You can see, for instance, these are just clouds. Something very uh, critical to our operation is it has to be energy efficient. This ensure the ability of a system to be deployed anywhere rapidly and not relying on too much electricity. Um, very interesting is the ability to centralize all the captured data into the cloud through various means. But one is very interesting is the ability to have monitoring and real-time monitoring and being able to have dashboards. And in addition to that, we have a working observatory at Harvard that is providing data that we analyze with machine learning software. And we celebrated the amazing results that we already have. The plan is to make copies of this uh, observatory and place them in many geographical locations. In my talk earlier today, um, we have uh, we have developed models of the lenses in order that we can undistort images and figure out where um, any pixel is pointing in the world frame. And that's really important and will be especially important for triangulation later. We can send that information over to our pan tilt zoom camera over there in order that it can point and, and focus on something. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot so our detection camera is doing the object detection, tracking, classification. Data fusion engines tracking it. If there's more objects, you see them in the list. It's doing automatic target uh, recommendations, sending those messages to the PTZ in real time, and it's responding. Yeah. There's the object, right? Yeah. All right, my name is Andy Mead. I'm an audio engineer, uh, co-lead of the acoustics team uh, on the Galileo project. And this is uh, phase 1.0 of Amos, which is our acoustic monitoring omnidirectional system. Uh, and we're covering the audible band. Uh, we're covering the ultrasonic band, which is above human hearing. Uh, and then down below, uh, we're covering the uh, infrasonic band, which is below human hearing. Uh, and our system has been up and running for about a year at this point, uh, and we've collected some uh, really solid data uh, with which to build some machine learning models uh, and to do some analysis. So we're uh, prepped and ready uh, whenever uh, we see something anomalous to have this be another bit of data with which to verify. It's a fantastic uh, feeling to see how ideas that we thought about two years ago come fruition in terms of instruments, in terms of new data. We are clearly changing the world. And at the same time, in Washington DC, there are discussions about materials that the US government may have in its possession uh, that may indicate uh, extraterrestrial intelligence technological origin. And uh, hopefully, uh, the Galileo project will find such evidence even before the government puts it forward. So we are all looking forward to the coming months and years and many discoveries to come.